let's now talk about what happens with a price ceiling. So we've got a, a downward sloping demand curve, uh, upward sloping supply curve, the market equilibrium point here, but let's now assume that the government introduces some kind of price ceiling at this level here. It's a ceiling at this price down here. And remember the, the kind of prices that we've been using at the, the equilibrium price here we've been assuming is five dollars equilibrium quantity is say ten uh, this intersects over here at one dollar this the demand curve intersects at about ten dollars so let's assume that this um, uh, this price ceiling here is roughly about three dollars or so down here now again the first step is to work out where the market will actually operate uh, and the answer is it's actually going to operate here it's going to move from this point here under equilibrium to this point here under ceiling and why is that the case well, it's because the ceiling, the price ceiling, prevents the price from moving towards equilibrium. Naturally, the market would operate here, but the price ceiling prevents it from getting above there, and it stops here at the price ceiling. And again, this is the weird thing with price floors and price ceilings. Normally in a room, the ceiling's at the top of the room and the floor's on the bottom. Uh, but on these supply and demand uh, and curves, in order for a ceiling to be effective, then it needs to be actually below the equilibrium to prevent the price getting up. Likewise, the floor needs to be above the equilibrium for it to be effective to prevent the price from going down to equilibrium. The market's going to operate here because the amount that this is the quantity here that uh, the suppliers are actually interested in in supplying, whereas this is the amount that customers are actually interested in demanding. But quite frankly, it's irrelevant. Uh, and I'm just going to sort of make up some numbers here. Let's assume this is roughly again. Um, sort of uh, five units, this is roughly uh, about four, uh, 14 or so units, just roughly. Um, but quite frankly, it's irrelevant that customers demand 14 units. Suppliers, the sellers, are actually only interested in supplying five units. So the, the market actually transacts at this point here, and there ends up being a whole lot of excess demand or a shortage and then buyers form queues and stuff like that as they queue up to try to to, um, to to buy the product or sellers work out some kind of way of rationing these five units amongst the 14 customers who would actually like to buy it. Okay, so the market's going to operate here. How do we work out producer and consumer surplus? Well, you work out the point at which the market's operating, draw a horizontal line to the vertical axis. Um, producer surplus is going to be the amount above the supply curve and um, up to that, that point. And notice it's pretty small. <laughs> Producer surplus has gone down from this triangle here down to this tiny little triangle here. To work out the uh, consumer surplus, you sort of go up until you hit the demand curve. And then it's the area below the demand curve um, uh, to that horizontal line that we drew. So that's the consumer surplus there. So Looks like consumers are pretty happy. There's a, a big area of consumer surplus here. Hopefully the, the size of the extra rank rectangle here, uh, in terms of the size of that consumer surplus, uh, compensates uh, the consumers for the lost surplus here. So basically these, these buyers miss out on, on buying the product, so they lose all of their surplus here. And only these customers actually get to enjoy uh, the uh, consumer surplus. So they get a whole lot of consumer surplus this area here. And notice this white space here. We've got um, quite a big dead weight loss here. So this is the um, the dead weight loss here, and no one gets that surf that um, no one actually gets that surplus there. Under a market equilibrium, this was the producer surplus. This was the consumer surplus. So that was actually divided between consumers uh, between the buyers and the sellers. But under a price ceiling, this is the consumer surplus this area here, this is the producer surplus and no one gets that and so that's a deadweight loss to society so social surplus has actually decreased